And when you're here, you're family. Famed for its Americanized Italian cuisine, the Olive Garden has fallen on hard times. But why? Well, let's take a look at 10 reasons why Olive Garden is struggling. The pandemic. We were out at the Olive Garden for dinner, which was lovely. Restaurants and catering businesses were among the first to be severely impacted by the global pandemic. As social distancing standards went into effect, dining in restaurants nearly disappeared across the states. While many firms attempted to retool and adjust to the new circumstances, many others are still reeling from the consequences of the shutdowns. Worse, there is an unprecedented amount of uncertainty about if and when people will feel safe returning to their local eateries, as well as how many businesses will survive the seemingly never-ending crisis. Olive Garden was expected to generate $2.5 billion in sales last year, but that number was not achieved. Pre-sales are down 16%. 60. Furthermore, Olive Garden sales only increased by about 30% after restrictions were lifted, which was less than predicted. The pandemic appears to have had a significant influence on the restaurant's operations. Olive Garden was particularly vulnerable to pandemic disruptions since it was an eat-in restaurant with an older clientele. For this reason, the restaurant chain experienced more hardship than other brands in the industry. In reality, other restaurants were were able to adjust their business strategy, but Olive Garden saw a significant drain on their profit margin. Still recovering from the 2008 financial crash. Money, I don't have any money. The casual dining sector, of which Olive Garden is a part, has still yet to recover from the 2008 economic collapse. Over the course of the financial recovery, the delivery business began to see a boom owing to the introduction of delivery applications. As a result, informal dining sank. Before the pandemic, it was clear that there was a paradigm shift in the market that was strongly favoring high-quality fast food businesses over chain-oriented sit-down eating. Casual dining companies Companies that were once famed for table service, large dining rooms, and lengthy menus have lost their charm over time. Since the 2008 recession, when many customers considered the cost of dining out too pricey, this sector has been on a shaky foundation. A few years later, casual dining establishments were confronted with a new challenge. Third-party delivery companies like DoorDash and Grubhub were growing in popularity, pushing more consumers to order in rather than dine. Dining out. You can follow your order online. Casual dining outlets who have traditionally promoted their restaurants as places to visit and spend time in have been particularly hesitant to join such programs, which levy a fee that eats into company earnings. Changing consumer dining habits. Just eat it straight out of the wrapper and then throw it all out. For decades, every mall or major intersection had a Chili's, Olive Garden, or Applebee's, and occasionally all three. However, the casual dining business has outstayed its welcome. According to retail data firms, customer visitation to these eateries has decreased in nine of the last 13 years. Same-store sales were static beginning in 2010 as the U.S. economy began to mend and consumer spending return. Despite the fact that the unemployment rate has dropped to a five-year low and the stock market has risen, reaching new heights, sector-wide sales at restaurants open for at least a year fell by 2% in December. Bankruptcy! Sure, the bad weather didn't help, but it can't explain the lackluster national results. Even some of the most well-known restaurants have battled for years to attract diners and generate steady sales growth. The companies have been in a self-sustaining cycle of value menu discounting in order to entice customers with a variety of low-cost takeout and food delivery alternatives. Competing for loyal customers Yes, you are a smart and strong competitor. Loyalty programs are, of course, nothing new in the industry. Subway's Sub Club Punch Card, for example, was used by millions of people. However, loyalty programs have in large part gone digital, giving customers an incentive to return and spend more while also making it much easier for them to do so. For some years, a few restaurant businesses have been investing in upgrading their loyalty programs, engaging in a slow-moving battle to win over customers who increasingly rely on digital platforms to reach those brands. 
As a result of the pandemic, companies are fighting for a smaller pool of customers with greater pent-up demand than in the past. I'm facing a very difficult problem here. According to a recent study, 47% of diners now participate in at least one loyalty program, with the percentage of consumers participating in a restaurant reward program increasing by 12% from January to April of this year. From March 2020 to March 2021, digital orders climbed by 124% in the industry. It's no surprise that 47% of customers feel that reward systems are more essential now than they were before the outbreak. These incentives are not only appealing to more digital customers, but they are also assisting companies in their recovery from a difficult couple of years. There are too many restaurants. There are too many choices. The CEO of Darden Restaurants, which owns Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse, blamed the industry's problems on the sheer number of restaurants in the United States. More businesses must close in order for Olive Garden and other franchises to survive. In the retail business, working with far too many branches is a regular problem. A common problem. It's tough for any chain to succeed when there are too many outlets of a given sort of business, whether it's fast food or fashion. It's a situation made worse by the fact that Americans are increasingly leaning towards small businesses and independent eateries. There are now more restaurants in the United States than Americans. Americans can visit, and when they do go out, they prefer to visit small establishments rather than national corporations. Grocery store prices over the years. I didn't know grocery stores were so sexy. Some believe that people are dining more at home since it's less expensive. McDonald's USA president commented on the fact that more people have started eating at home as a way of saving some money as everything continues to get more expensive. Wendy's CEO echoed the same thought, stating that the rising price difference between home-cooked meals and restaurant food meant businesses needed to provide customers with new reasons to dine out. Grocery businesses are keen to capitalize on disgruntled restaurant patrons. I said we had to beat them. Whole Foods, for example, is expanding its prepared meals and in-store eateries. As per a recent study in 2015, when it comes to in-store eating and prepared dishes from grocery stores, there were 4 billion food service visits and $10 billion in consumer spending. This is an almost 30% increase from 2008, which has cut directly into the profits of chain restaurants and other dining businesses. Consumers are looking for convenience. How's everything going over here? Terrible! Go away! Customers are abandoning sit-down restaurants in favor of convenience and cost. Restaurants that appear to be suffering the most tend to be those with sit-down service, where individuals pay more due to wait staff. The five-year decline in revenue at well-known eateries like Ruby Tuesdays is an extreme case, but many others are suffering from the same problem. It's a result of people's shifting eating habits and lifestyles. Younger people, in particular, are on the go. They want convenience, quality, portability, and healthy options. Sit-down businesses accounted for 53% of the restaurant industry a decade ago. Fast food restaurants, which do not employ wait staff, now account for the majority of the market. Who's the king now, Joe? I am! Outside competition is also occurring in the food industry's nooks and crannies. Things like convenience stores, supermarket prepared food sections, and meal delivery services are taking a bite out of sales. The restaurant business is particularly susceptible to change, with existing companies continually in danger of becoming outdated as newcomers arrive. Even behemoths like McDonald's, which are attempting to improve their image and food quality, are feeling the squeeze. For the second year in a row, the world's largest burger chain looks to be on course to reduce its location count in the United States. Consumers want healthy foods. Oh, that's me. Salad. Trying to eat healthy. 93% of customers have a desire to eat healthy at least part of the time, with 63% attempting to eat healthy most of the time or all of the time. A 2018 food and beverage study of over 1,600 consumers yielded these results and expanded on the findings. The study asked about people's opinions and preferences for healthy, environmentally friendly meals and beverages. 
In comparison to prior years, the number of things customers seek from food outlets has increased substantially. Consumer interest has previously been focused on a few popular assertions, but now that has expanded. Consumers were devoted or occasional supporters of over 12 health and wellness claims in the study, up 20% from previous years. We are going to eat healthier. In previous polls, customers were more inclined to search for less of promises, such such as sugar-free, fat-free, low-salt, low-carbohydrate, or low-calorie alternatives. The focus of consumer views now migrated to aspects connected to health and well-being. Foods and drinks that match more sophisticated criteria of health and well-being, ethics, and sustainability have become mainstream, with most customers expecting them from restaurants. What hasn't changed is consumers' desire for decadent and delectable menu items made with excellent ingredients rather than processed, nutritionally deficient ones. Millennials aren't going to chain restaurants. You cannot eat fast food. Millennials are partially to blame for the decline of casual dining, but should they feel bad about it? Casual dining franchises such as the Olive Garden, TGI Fridays, Ruby Tuesdays, and Applebee's have failed to attract customers and improve revenue, resulting in scores of restaurant closures. In a letter to shareholders, Buffalo Wild Wings CEO spoke about how casual dining restaurants face an especially tough market today. Unlike past generations, millennials are more interested in cooking at home, ordering restaurant delivery, and dining quickly in fast, casual, or quick-serve restaurants. Something noble but easy. Due to decreased pricing and incentives like pickup and delivery, new technology, and fashionable amenities like wine bars and to-go meals, grocery stores are increasingly in competition with restaurants. Meal delivery services like Blue Apron are focusing on signing up millennials for membership plans in order to encourage them to cook at home a set number of days each week. While delivery is an attractive option, it is not an easy service for every restaurant to implement. Customers spend less when they order delivery than when they eat at casual dining establishments, which rely heavily on alcohol orders to generate revenue. In in-house delivery entails additional complications, driver compensation, and insurance expenditures. Using a third party might result in a loss of control over the quality of the meal as well. In any case, when it comes to Olive Garden, something's gotta give. Focusing on renovations and not customer service service is really slow. Super slow. Good luck getting that in the next hour. Starboard, a business which owns around 8.8% of Darden, Olive Garden's parent company, argues that the Italian chain's food quality and taste have gotten much worse over the years and that some meals are inedible. It also blames Olive Garden for investing money in restaurant renovations rather than enhancing customer service. Seriously removed from true Italian culture, the menu at Olive Garden now includes burgers and fries, Spanish appetizers, thick cream sauces, more fried items, loaded cheeses, mushy pasta, and tasteless tomato sauces. Mamma mia! Olive Garden's parent company is spending a lot of money renovating its restaurants rather than improving customer service. Renovations are expected to cost up to $600,000 per restaurant, which could be used to improve many aspects of their overall dining experience instead. The food has really fallen from grace at Olive Garden, even dropping the ball on items they are famous for. Today's lower-quality refined flour breadsticks contain more air and have a weaker taste, similar to hot dog buns, than the breadsticks that customers know and love. It's such a shame that Olive Garden has fallen so far, as most Americans have fond memories of the chain, and especially their addicting breadsticks. Maybe this will serve as a wake-up call for the brand, and they will start to reinvent themselves for a new generation of pasta lovers. Searching for another great video? Just tap or click, and smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.